Hi, Vermont middle schoolers. Um, my name is Margaret, and I learned about this cool project that you are engaging in as you learn about potential careers and you're thinking about your futures. And I was invited by a friend to share some stories about my work with you. Um, so I made these cards to help me uh, stay on track and talk through some of the helpful things that might be interesting for you to hear about, hopefully. Um, so first of all, what is UBB? I work for an organization called UBB, University Beyond Bars. We call it UBB for short. And um, UBB is a small nonprofit. We're located in the Seattle, Washington area. And our organization serves incarcerated people in Washington State Reformatory, which is a medium security prison um, that's about 40 minutes outside of the city of Seattle. Um, the prison itself has about 800 people that live in it, and there, it's on a, it's at the Monroe Correctional Complex, which is a hill that has about five prisons on the hill. Um, and in this prison, we provide a number of services um, that are all related to education. So there's basically three pathways that we offer as an organization. The first pathway is our arts and lecture series. Um, so the arts and lecture series is once. Uh, well, it's actually every other week, twice a month. Um, we have uh, teachers and educators and community members who are who work out in the world come inside the prison and tell stories about their work and help people stay connected to um, connected to and inspired around opportunities for learning. So our big mission is helping people to be in learning communities together. And so arts and lecture series is a really fun way to do that. So just once a week, cool seminars. Um, recently, some of my favorites are, um, we had a Harry Potter literary series where um, actually there were two sessions of that where people talked about um, how they can relate to Harry Potter in their lives and talked about some of the um, literary merits of the book and other things around that. Um, but we also have things like sustainability or um, science or mindfulness or social issues that are happening, politics, um, current events, things like that. So that's the first thing, our arts and lecture seminar series, twice a month, just really um, low stakes. Anybody who wants to come can just sign up and come in the prison. The second thing we offer is what I call the enrichment pathway. And so we offer about 15 classes on a quarter system that our quarters are 12 weeks long. We have about 15 classes each quarter and I would say maybe half of those are part of our enrichment pathway. And that means that those credits, or those classes are not for credit. They don't count towards college, but they're a great opportunity for anyone who wants to be in a learning community to learn different things. So for example, um, some of those classes include, we have a studio art class where people come together and they paint on Monday nights um, and they can just work on whatever kind of paintings they want and they have other friends and colleagues and teachers who come in and help to teach painting skills. Um, we also have a debate class. It's a debate team that meets every Sunday and they um, practice their debate uh, skills and, and engage in research around different, different topics so that they can present a strong argument. Um, we have other classes like computer skills classes and entrepreneurship classes or graphic design classes. Really what students are interested in, they can bring to our organization and say, hey, can you offer a class on this? And then we try to find a teacher who can do it. Um, and that, that's our enrichment pathway, not for credit classes that are just helping people um, have learning experiences and learning spaces in their lives and um, just an opportunity for growth. The third pathway that we have is our credit bearing pathway. So we do a lot of college coursework um, and many of our students are working on their associates of arts degrees. So we have a partnership with Seattle Central College, which is a college in this area. Um, and they help us to facilitate um, credit bearing associates degrees. And then we also have a partnership with a college called Adams State University where we work with them to deliver Bachelor of Arts um, degrees. So we have about 15 students who graduate each year so far, um, the last few years, um, as part of our associate's degree pathway. And um, we have about 60 students who are in that pathway total. It takes a lot longer to get a degree in prison um, than it does on the outside of prison um, because the, the access to resources is just a lot more difficult. So we aren't able to offer as many classes inside the prison as a regular college campus m might, but 
we do our best to get people through the degree pathway as fast as we can. So we have about 60 working on their AA degrees right now, and we have about 30 that are working on their bachelor's degrees right now. And we're really proud of all of those students and the hard work that they put in. Um, the prison environment is not always the most supportive environment for going to school, and so um, it's a pretty amazing thing that our community members have made such a commitment to that. Um, just another thing about those three pathways, I'll say, is that many of our students have had an interrupted experience with education. So you all, as 7th and 8th graders, um, you might be able to imagine a really hard day when you don't want to go to school anymore. And some of the students that I work with actually did stop going to school at a young age, and this is their way of getting back in the classroom and kind of getting back on that academic pathway, and it's really important um, to them to be able to do that. So that's what UBB is. Um, we're an educational program that works inside a medium security men's prison in Washington State. Um, prison, whoa! Um, often when I tell people I work inside a prison, uh, folks have a lot of questions about that, so I just wanted to name um, that many people are touched by incarceration, incarceration. So maybe some of you who are watching this have a family member who is incarcerated and, and maybe some of you have a neighbor or a loved one or someone you know. Um, there are 2.2 million people in America who are incarcerated. And in Washington state where I live, there's 16,000 incarcerated people um, in my state. So um, it's a lot of people who are impacted by this and we really want to help people get out of prison and going to school is a great way to help people set up a really strong path for when they release from prison. Um, the prison where I work is a medium security prison so it means that a lot of the people I work with are serving long sentences. Um, so I have folks who have more than three years to serve for the most part. Um, so folks who may be serving a 20 year sentence or a lifetime sentence, um, and we wanna make sure that everybody has equal access to learning spaces, because that's really important. Um, some, well, maybe that's the next one. College, whoa, some people say, well, why give college access to people who are serving a life sentence in prison? Like, what are they gonna do with that? Um, and I think it's really important um, for one, I think every human being just deserves to have an opportunity to learn and grow. And I think that being in spaces of learning is something that shouldn't be a privilege, but often is. And um, so the spaces of learning that we get to create are um, really, a, it's a powerful community inside the prison. And, and we found that folks, no matter their sentence, have influence over their community. Um, being able to make a positive choice like investing in your own education and learning and growth is something that's really powerful. From a political and economic standpoint, it's actually a really good thing too. Um, there is data that shows that for every $1 that we invest in our taxes in education in prison, there's actually a $5 savings because when people go to prison, the higher level of education they have, the less likely they are to come back to prison. So if you get an AA degree, you're less likely to come back. If you get a BA degree, you're even less likely to come back. If you get a master's degree, then your chances of coming back to prison are very, very small. Um, but sometimes we see people who release from prison and um, have a hard time figuring out how to get their lives back on track and um, might make choices or might not have as many opportunities as having you might have with a degree. Um, it's helpful sometimes to have a degree. So college, whoa, it's a big deal in prison um, to be able to create these opportunities. A lot of prisons focus on vocational education and this program that I get to work with um, focuses on liberal arts. So letting people really dive into like literature and social science and um, you know, regular science, the natural world, all kinds of topics. Um, so it's a, it's a really special environment inside the prison. What is my job, which is what this is really all about, is our career pathways. Um, my job is supporting, well, I do a lot of everything, actually. Um, we're a small organization with only four staff members, and we serve, like I said, hundreds of people um, as students, and then we work with hundreds of volunteers, and we have many, many college partners that we work with that help to teach our class and provide administrative support. So. I actually do a little work with all of those groups. So I work with our students and try to help them with their degree pathways. And in that sense, I might be like a school guidance counselor. Um, I also work with our teachers. So in that case, I might be like a school principal. I help to schedule the courses and think about what our curriculum will look like. Um, I also work with the Department of Corrections. And in that sense, I might be a little bit like doing some political and logistical coordinating. Um, <coughs> 
And I guess, yeah, those are some of the main things that I do. Um, one of the questions was a typical day. What's a typical day like for me and my job? And it could really vary. Um, I usually spend about four days a week inside the prison um, working directly with students or with DOC or with our instructors while they're teaching classes, trying to support them in that environment. Um, we have a lot of hurdles that we jump over to be able to make um, classes happen in prison. For example, there's no internet in prison, so students can't Google anything. They have to do all their research on paper and on in books. Um, the technology that we can have in the classroom is really, really, really limited, and so a lot of the teaching and learning, our teachers have to come in and think about how to teach in a different way. So I work with instructors on that. I work with students on their degree pathways. I work with um, our community members to set up our curricular schedule. Um, but my day might be driving to the prison. Um, once I arrive, there's a number of security checkpoints that I have to go through, so I walk through a number of gates and turnstiles. Um, I have to get a special key, um, and actually I can show you, in order to get a key, I have to give the officers that are working a thing called... Oh no, where is it? A thing called a chip. Found it. <laughs> it has my name engraved on it, and when I give this to the officers on duty, they, they can give me the key to my office. Um, and then I walk through a couple more security checkpoints. I walk past the yard where people walk laps and sit outside and get sunshine and lift weights and then I go into a building that's called the prisoner activity building and in there is where we have our classrooms and my office um, and in that space I work with students I have meetings with um, DOC administrators and then I am in the classroom a lot um, so the days are long in prison the day is set up in what is called programming blocks so incarcerated people live in cells and then they leave their cells and they go to that PAB the prisoner activity building for different chunks of time so maybe um, the from 7:30 to 10 30 in the morning and then they go back to their cells for what's called count and then they have a meal and then they come back out <clears throat> um, from 12 30 to 3 30 is the second programming block and we can have a class for that three hour chunk and then they have to go back for what's called count and then they have a meal and then there's an evening programming block from 5.45 to 8.30 p.m. Um, so my day is really dictated by those um, programming blocks and those chunks of time. So either I'm with students during those chunks of time or I'm doing administrative work in between those chunks of time, like a lot of planning and logistics. Um, so that's a little bit about my day. And how I got here. How did I get a job like this? Um, I have worked in education for about 15 years. Um, I think that there's nothing cooler that, than uh, being able to learn. I think it's something really special about being human, um, that we can learn things. And I really love um, being able to support other people in their learning experience. Um, I also think that the more that I've learned about learning, the more that I've seen that there are challenges with um, the systems that are set up. Uh, so not everybody has the same access to learning experiences. And in prison, it's probably one of the hardest places to get a really good education. Um, and so it seems like a really good place to put some energy into creating a very supportive learning environment. Um, so when I moved to Washington after leaving Vermont, um, I was looking for a new place to work and I came across this organization and the more I learned about it, the more interested I was. I applied for a job here. Um, I first had a phone interview with um, my colleague, Joel, and then I had to go into the prison and have an interview with the Prisoner Advisory Committee. So we have a, a student leadership committee of incarcerated folks who help make decisions for the organization and who help us really like think about how to be um, in partnership in a way that feels really um, like we're not making decisions for people, but they get to have a lot of agency in the decisions that are made around how the program works. So they got to meet me and decide whether they thought that I'd be a good fit for the job. and. Um, and they did, which is really cool. Um, so now I've been with the org for about two years. It's the hardest job I've ever had. Um, prison is a place that makes me really sad sometimes. I think it's really difficult to be in an environment where people um, face so much hardship, but 
uh, being able to be part of a space of learning where people get to do so much growth and have a lot of agency over the changes they make in their lives is really, really special. So I feel pretty honored to be part of that. Um, and if you're interested, I think a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I want to see what that's like and I want to know more and um, have a lot of questions. We do have a Facebook and an Instagram page that um, you can see pictures of some of our students, some of our projects, um, and some of our volunteers and community members. And there's also a couple of videos on um, linked on our website, universitybeyondbars.org, that have incarcerated um, graduates speak at doing their graduation speeches and those are really inspiring and tell a little bit more about the organization and the work um, yeah I feel like if you're up for hard work um, working for a nonprofit is a really cool thing it's it feels important to be contributing to my community in a way that is about people and is about taking care of people and providing opportunities for people to um, grow and live a good life um, that feels important to me and it feels like also socially like um, working within the system of mass incarceration feels important to me um, incarceration is something that I think people are getting a better understanding of in America right now and realizing that 2.2 million people is a lot of folks to have in prison and we need to do more to help people get out and live a healthy life on the outside so um, yeah it's a tough job it feels like it's important work to be part of. And um, if you have questions, my email is margaret, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T, at universitybeyondbars.org. And I'd be happy to answer questions that you might have about our organization or about the work. Um, I really love Vermont. I really miss Vermont. Um, and I'm really excited for the future careers that y'all will have and the change that you'll be making in the world and the positive impact that I know y'all will be having. So. Um, thanks for your curiosity in my work, and I hope you have fun with this project.